undefeated in terms of series wins. And they may not be the fourth seed coming into this playoffs, but they can still upset and knock out a team that is considered a juggernaut of Europe. Well, one team is going to be getting a harsh lesson today. Which one it will be will be determined, of course, potentially in three maps at the maximum. We could go all the way to five. What it's a spectacle eight. that would be. That would be a spectacle and a half. And on paper, like, I've been an Eagle fanboy for the last few weeks, but being realistic, Giganti, this should be their series with the way things have been shaping up, with the way they've been playing. For Eagle Gaming, we've got to see all six members turn up the heat. Yesterday, we saw a good four or five of the members really showing up on some of the maps. Now we've got to see consistency. We've got to see unity. We have got to see the performance of their lifetime. And Des, to kick things off, almost a mirror composition, but that interaction you love so much, the Moira in exchange for the Zenyatta. Ripper, of course, taking the Omnic, as Eagle Gaming are taking a more scenic route round the backside of Team Giganti, looking to come in from behind. But they're pushing themselves onto the point. Shields are holding strong for now. There's a stun up onto Cloudy. The sustain and the healing needs to come in, but the charge, charge. Blue will bring him down. It cost him his life. RCK with the micro missile tracking should win out Giganti this first fight. Lots and lots of support being piled into Cloudy there to make sure he hasn't gone down from all that focus. Eagle Gaming tried twice to burst him down, but could not make it happen. And part of that came, like you said, from Ripper being on the Zenyatta, that Discord Orb onto Super Pluk. It didn't matter that the charge came through because he went down immediately after. Eagle Gaming acknowledged they're going to lose these trades because they're going pretty quickly. They need a Zenyatta on side to make sure they get the Discord down onto a frontline tank and melt him out before they worry about losing a lack of healing. You can predict what's going to happen as well. Hip changing over so late means that Rip will have a Transcendence. The Eagle Gaming will not the rally coming out from Shattuck is everyone an armor breach. They isolate Super Pluk, take him out of the field. And Team Giganti should be able to walk over this fight again, barring any surprises from Eagle Gaming. He's going to try and stagger a couple of members out here. If they could have got hold of the mech, that would have been the dream scenario because then you force them to throw away all of that ultimate charge that Nico is currently sat on, but he manages to stay alive. Eagle Gaming now the team coming into this with an ultimate advantage. We knew they were going to lose a couple of fights based on how the first one went and the ultimate advantage being on Giganti's side. Here comes the graph search. Are you not going to, are you going to get Giganti? Bomb Giganti, you're going to yeah. try to do oh. it, not as much, not as successful as you'd expect it. The heart is still coming out with the double. Super Fluke, just going to take out RCK, boom, from straight off the point. This is going to be a flip over to Eagle Game. I love the Divas when they're trying to distract Jorain, they just keep on doing crazy movements, and that one was a uh, bit of a unique one. Can't say I've come across that one before, but they make it work for them. You mentioned the whole Giganti Bomb scenario, they burned through a couple of ultimates. The most important thing for Eagle, and something I criticised them for back in weeks one and two, was that they throw so many ults at a fight more than they need to. They only use two there, that was the perfect amount. They've got four ultimates online for this next fight, but so do Giganti. A more controlled Eagle Gaming, but unfortunately you can't control the Earth Shatter Super Fluke winning out that trade. Follows up with a charge, taking out Shatter follows up onto Cloudy as well. So the tank line or the tankier members in this race. Super Blue picking up a third for himself as well. He really wants to show up big against Cloudy today. Already back onto 65% for that Earth Shatter, which he used in that last fight. Cloudy's got blocked, and then Super Blue immediately was there with the follow up to get the counter Shatter down. The sound barrier wasn't enough coming out of Massar. They still lose that fight. Nico's about to get that self destruct back online, as well as Hardest, if he didn't go down, would have had that Graviton surge. But guess who still has his? Davin pulls him together. They throw up the self to try to buy some time. RCK taking out Lil Bo, but Cloudy and the rest of Team Giganti going to move on to this point, flip it back under their control. And they still didn't lose the advantage in terms of the percentage capture they've got so far. Eagle Gaming, once again, they're looking towards the ultimate charges they've got online. They chose not to expend any in the dying moments of that fight, except for the transcendence. So again, discipline coming through, being willing to say, right, this fight is over. Do not expend any more of your ultimates. We're saving them for the next one. Giganti definitely feel like they're in the driving seat, but let's not forget they had that 50% advantage from those first couple of fights. Eagle Gaming soaring high. They're entering the danger zone, and the transcendence should block out a lot of the damage. The self-destruct will find no one else. Marsa with the boot back in to mix things up and the Shatter gets exchanged again. But LH Cloudy doesn't have the HP to stay alive. Eagle Gaming forcing themselves onto the point. They can't get through this initial choke. When they do, they go down just like Leaf. But they're going to push forward and now they're down in the lower levels. With overtime ticking down, they have to travel back up and no one's got the verticality to do it. Team Giganti going to take University. Very, very small mistake at the very start of that by Eagle as well. They went for the combo with the Graviton Surge, followed up by the Diva Self-Destruct. All that was it was being waited on was Super Plute's charge through. He hit a wall instead of an enemy team member, so that shield stayed alive. Everyone survived, and then we saw the fight kind of devolve into that 4v4 at the end where there was no real definitive frontline tank, and it was a bit scrappy back and forth. Giganti just showing, though, their superiority and closing that one out. Second destination in the Oasis is, of course, going to be Gardens. 
Team Yanti leading this map one to nothing. They finish this one out. They're going to take a series lead. What a great way to start their semi-final two final run. I can't remember who it was back in week one. I think it was potentially one point where we saw Eagle running a lot of 3-3 into them. And this is the one map I specifically remember because they lost a lot of fights back to back. I remember thinking, well, if Eagle can't run tanks, what are they going to run? Because that's their go-to bread and butter. Now they're trying to set up against Giganti with it, and so far seems to be winning at least the initial engagement. Already given a few fisticuffs for the tank line, but Team Giganti, no pushover. They're going to do the exact same thing back to Eagle Gaming as they retreat, try and get some healing up as Nico going to take out one of those sources of healing. Marsa being taken off the field. Nico going to dance back around, so healing advantage in favor of Eagle Gaming, as well as the positional. Team Giganti are contesting this as long Hello as they, they can, are. but they have to be so tested about it. They can't fully commit to it and the transcendence being burnt out already by ripper as the shatter comes down onto multiple members eagle gaming should be able to walk away with this one and get the first capture on gardens so despite losing very very early on hip was on 65 percent with that charge on the transcendence ripper he had his online and managed to bring it out just a shame really they didn't have the lucio on side because without the lucio a 3-3 comp is essentially a sitting brick it can't move anywhere particularly fast all the onus then goes onto the other side to choose when do we engage when do we retreat what do we choose to do in this fight they've got a lot of support ultimates online we've always spoke about eagle gaming and saying how they rely quite a lot on support ultimates to win big fights out right now they've got two of them Davin getting close to that Graviton Surge of his own, but they've got to contend against Eagle Gaming. They're going to blow their combo early. Throw the self-destruct into the back line. There's the charge, but it's going to be the charge that gets the kill rather than the self-destruct. Eagle Gaming going to walk over Giganti again, but they used a lot of ultimates to make that happen, Des. This is the kind of outcome I would have expected at the end of Season 1 when these guys played in the quarterfinals last time round, is that Eagle Gaming being the 5-0 team coming up against 4th seed Team Giganti from Group A. This is how I expected the game to go. It's happening here at the end of Season 2. And I can't believe I'm saying this, Trid, but Eagle Gaming are stacking up against Team Giganti in team-wide battles and so far have not lost one of the last three trades on this second round. Team-wide battles are at the point where Ultimates came into the equation. Giganti definitely adds up better on their side. Only, Only one, one yeah. with the Graviton Surge, bro, in the self-destruct. Nasty K is going to be the one to get that kill. Trying to get the DMEC onto Nico, so they've lost the tank. They're going to settle for the Bunny Blaster DPS instead as RCK rolls through another one with no resistances to hold Eagle Gaming all together. The foundations have been crippled. The building's going to topple, and Team Giganti going to flip this point. It's like we always say about these 3-3 three, three comps, though, Trid. You rely so much on that front line being brought down to be able to capitalize and kill the rest of the team that although the Graviton Surge only managed to catch the Reinhardt, all they had to do was burn through him. There's no shields left for the rest of the team, and it's easy pickings for Giganti to stroll their way through. So yes, it was one member, but it was the most important member of the team. Giganti throwing away an Earth Shatter, and it's going to be countered with the Graviton Surge. There's the charge and the Transcendent to keep everyone alive. Superplute's going to mess up his own as well, so it's a zero-sum equation for the Earth Shatters as Hardest moving around to the backside. Lilbo killing off LH Cloudy as they move towards the point. So they're missing that mobility again. There's the sitting brick. It might not be able to keep their head above water as Eagle Gaming are starting to drown them in defeat. They are an RCK holding the high ground here because no one else can really get up to him except Nico, who is going to try and chase him up, although he's already dropped down. It's more cleanup duty here for Eagle Gaming to catch the point back, but every single percentage can counter it. Let's not forget in last series, we saw a good 30 to 40% hold coming out of Windstrike just to make sure, no, Angry Titan, sorry, to make sure they didn't sacrifice that point away too, too soon. About to hit that 80% mark, 20% left for Giganti. They've got about halfway themselves, so they're not totally out of it, but it just relies on winning this fight. And with only a self destruct in their pocket to call on now as well the Transcendence and Davin's Graviton Surge about to come online. They're contending against the Eagle Gaming, who are in a similar position, who are also equally close towards getting those ultimate. Going to pull in the Graviton Surge. There's the Shatter blocked up by the shield. Follow up with the charge in time. They the shielding is there to stop the Giganti Bomb from taking full effect as they then aggress onto them. But the Graviton Surge locks them in place. A D-Mech should come out here for RCK. The Shatter blocked up by Super Fluke. No counter attack. No avenue left for Team Giganti as they're trying to stem the flow of them coming back in but they're doing it without the ultimates anyway, Des. The sound barrier comes in, gives them a new wind of life, and at 99% overtime, Team Giganti are going to flip it back in their favor. That's the second time now that Super Pluk has come out ahead of Cloudy when it comes to these shadow battles as well, and he's already got his back online. We mentioned yesterday that we need to add a new name to this list of Reinhardt's that we speak about in Europe. Super Pluk was that name, and I'm glad to see that a night's rest hasn't changed that. He's still on form. 
Okay, so now it's offensive time for Eagle Gaming. They've got a sound barrier as well as the rally. And of course, that earth shatter is hips about to hit the transcendence. So a lot to choose from here. They're gonna use that sound barrier to kick things off. Shatter whiffed away by Superplug again. Cloudy on point. Huge boot to move him to the side, but inconsequential in terms of the kill feed. Transcendent pulling everyone away and keeping them together with healing. It's gonna be used Bally again shatter. and matched by hip. The guy's got that shatter. There it it down. Is. Multiple members. Superplug can't block it. They're gonna throw everything at this one, Des, as they combo into the Graviton Surge and the self-destruct, but cleans out the freshly de-mech Nico. They're hitting the 90% mark. Eagle Gaming are going to have to rush this one for some kind of stall. As soon as I saw that ult online, I just knew something big was coming out in that fight from Cloudy, and you saw the drop. Five members caught out. That's all it takes for an Eagle Gaming wipe. And Leaf, well, he's on stall duty right now, playing over on the Wrecking Ball. The biggest concern is how they win this next fight. They're now down to two supports. Big issues for Wrecking Ball appears to be Stalling at this point, goes in with the pile driver, unable to connect, he hits the high ground. Nico, however, will take out Shadow, and that's the start of the They've kill team for Eagle Gaming as they start to get the flip. It wasn't the stall from Leaf, it was the damage from Hardest, Hip, and Nico as they get the flip. Overtime should tick down. They've got RCK off to the side for the stall. He managed to hide away from all the damage. There's only so much he can do oh, as he oh, takes himself up too high to keep the contest going. Eagle Gaming will level out Oasis 100% to 99. We've got a series on our hands, it feels like, Trid, especially with how close these last two maps have been. Really hard to write off either side. The big question for me that comes into this is when we start seeing the teams flex between what they're playing, seeing things like Farah and Hanzo, maybe the Orisa coming out for Gigante, the Sombra, another thing we need to consider, how do Eagle Gaming um, adapt and respond? Because that's going to be the big question mark as to whether or not they can continue to try and take rounds and fight away from Team Gigante. Looking a little bit more DPS orientated for Team Gigante this time around. Davin on the Tracer, Shadow on that Sombro and Eagle Gaming. They're sticking with the tanks. What a surprise. Is this to their downfall, Des? I don't think so. They know what they want to try and run. They know their strategy coming into this. And let's not forget, this was a Gigante map pick. They came in as the highest seed. They chose to come to Oasis. They will be prepared for this. And no doubt with this strategy, they're looking to try and isolate one of the key members in the backline, maybe Hip, because this guy is always getting in the kill feeds on that Zenyatta. Exoraft is usually the name we think of when we think of killing Zenyatas. Hip's also someone you've got to consider. So maybe they're trying to look into the backline, just try and shut down this comp before it can get moving. Team Gigante spots out what Eagle Gaming were doing and decided to adapt, match them in compositions. And they're clashing outside the Gigante spawn. Superplug already with the charge kill onto Shadow and then it's Cloudy. Not much longer for this world as Superplug will walk through him again. Hip, we talked about his damage potential. He takes out Master, no problems. And the rest of Gigante should fall to the wayside to Eagle Gaming for them to get this first cap. Very, very clinical as well. Davin almost getting picked up at the end, but Hard is not quite able to get that final plant, uh, plant down as well. 10% now on the ticker for them. Eagle Gaming very, very decisive in their playing Gigante. The problem they've got at the minute is Cloudy is consistently being focused down very, very quickly by Eagle Gaming. They've just got the, they've got his number. The Discord Orb always gets laid down. They burst through him incredibly quickly. It doesn't matter how many barriers or shields you throw at him, he dies every time. Ripper again with a much earlier transcendence that Eagle Gaming can muster up as Cloudy opens up the kill feed with a kill onto Super Plug. Shadow's going to follow up with his Squire taking out Nico and his mech and the rest of Gigante moving forward. They can now push the fight into Eagle Gaming's third of the map. Yeah, Eagle there splitting up as they were trying to retreat as well, which meant for Gigante, it was just a case of going, hey, well, here's some members entirely on their own. Let's isolate them and bring them down. Nico lost that mech pretty quick. They managed to get it back, so they've got all these ultimates coming up online now. Again, more discipline like we saw in the first round of this of this map. Starting to look pretty clean, Eagle. Question is, Gigante, are they starting to wise up to the antics that Eagle have been pulling out so far? Learning on the fly, a trait of a fantastic team is the Bounce on Surge going to come up and Eaton, and Eaton again. Eaten again. No alts coming out as RCK and Nico chow down on some Dark Star energy, but they can't chow down on the Shatter. Nice. That is going to go down. RCK with the self destruct will answer Super Flu. The kill feed looking awfully white as Eagle Gaming are moving forward against Gigante, and they're going to take it back at a similar percentage charge, leaving Davin as the last man on the field. Well, I really wanted to commend Shatter there for a great stun as that self destruct came through to make sure that the uh, Super Plute went down on the other side. But whilst he was doing that, Leaf was in the bat line getting two or three kills of his own, charging through the bat line rather than having to worry about the main tanks. So it just feels those slight changes in focus in terms of what members are being focused down by who and when, that's what's giving Eagle Gaming a small advantage. 
On this checkpoint, it seems to be the favorite move for Eagle Gaming as they isolate Cloudy. The rest of Gigante aren't going to be caught off guard by that huge shatter, knocking down Leaf and Hardest, denies them inactivity in the course of this fight. It hasn't affected it too much as the sound barrier comes out to negate any additional damage. Graviton Surge pulling multiple members, but no real damage follow up as Ripper is going to output some of his own with Davin and Shatter getting the mirror kill. It's going to be another flip to Team Gigante. Dez, no one can hold on to this point for a consistent amount of time. Shows just how closely matched these two teams are. Nico just trying to be a nuisance right now and hold this point for a bit longer. My biggest concern here is that the stall is going to come through, but it does mean if they win one more fight, this map should be theirs. They will take the first map of the series against Gigante. You couldn't ride it any better, Trid. I don't think anyone would have expected that to happen, especially with Gigante's pick as the highest seed. They have a set strategy for this map, but Eagle Gaming, they're picking up all the papers, they're throwing it behind them. They don't want to play it by the rules, and they're going to be taking the jail for it if Gigante can get a foothold and a couple of ultimates off. Trying to find the angle in now. Where do they want to start this fight off against Gigante? They are the ones in control, 40% still to go. The answer apparently is the rally. That's going to be the first thing out. Getting that armor online so they can go for that push and ignore a bit of the chip down. Shatter huge with the shatter. perfect time for Cloud as he knocks down Super Plume and negates most of the rally. Armor coming out from Eagle Gaming as Ripper follows up. Davin's going to do the same. 70% and ticking. A fast reset coming in for Eagle Gaming as Lilbo does what every parent tells their child not to do and takes a walk in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> There's something oddly satisfying about seeing us jump in traffic, knowing exactly what's coming in that case. Bizarre, but the reset came through regardless. This time round, ultimates are online for both sides, though. Evil Gaming, you're looking at hit with that transcendence. That's their big one. Big shatter coming out, but only catching two. Walking straight into the shatter, but this time Team Gigante don't want to concede the ground. They're taking the fight to Evil Gaming. self destructing in the middle of everyone as the shield will block out the damage. Master getting a kill onto Nico. Transcendence already used for Evil Gaming. They're building up to another one. Graviton Surge pulls them together. There's the charge to pull them out. Super Blue gonna hit. LH Cloudy and Master. Davin doing what he can to return the flow back to Team Gigante as a shatter from Super Plute will shut down anything that Shatter has planned for them. Two people alive. RCK gonna go down. Ripper's off to the wind. The flip comes out for Eagle Gaming. Overtime will be very close to coming down as they stall out Ripper. One messy team fight left for Team Gigante. They might be able to get at least the Lucy on point here as well for Masada to get that overtime ticking in, but this is gonna be a very big scrap now for Eagle Gaming. They're missing their healers. They've got none. And it's Cloudy whiffs the Earth Shatter immediately sorted out by Leaf as they're running towards the point. They're trying to nice stagger them out. Leaf. The body block is big for Leaf Eagle Gaming. Going to go 1-0 in this series to kick things off. Kind of surprised RCK didn't throw himself over the wall there, but instead just opted to say, well, let's go through the main route and try and fight that way instead. And well, it came out to bite them. Gigante, you never would have written this one into the books. Like I said, Eagle Gaming take the first map Oasis 2-1. Too many bodies on the point for them to break through. Eagle Gaming able to match toe-to-toe -to -toe with Team Gigante, and it sets the precedent for this matchup. Not a lot of people were expecting, as we were expecting Gigante to be the more dominant team. So, Des, we might have our first playoff match that looks like a real challenge that could go the distance for the both of these teams. But we're going to go to a quick break, and we'll bring you map number two shortly afterwards.
Welcome back to the Overwatch Contenders Europe semi-finals. Team Giganti versus Eagle Gaming is our final game of the day. And Eagle Gaming, against all odds, already leading the series 1-0. to zero. We're going to find out what their second map is in a second. But Des, not looking good for Giganti at the moment. It's not. And you never would have had this down on paper again. The Eagle would be in the lead against Giganti. It has only been one map. We speak a lot about the cough curse here in Europe. So there is still at least two more maps to go where Giganti can show us what they're made of. And that's where I think they'll start to mix things up. Because as we said, when it comes to these 3-3 three, three comps, Eagle seem to have it pretty much nailed down and Giganti struggling to beat them in some cases. Yes, they had a couple of advantages on the first and second, but third was a bit more clear cut, I felt. Of course, it was completely surprising to see Eagle Gaming come out. And quite frankly, a lot of the Earth Shatters being used by both LH Cloudy and Super Pluke just being eaten straight into a shield. And speaking of eats as well, we had that double grab consumption by <laughs> RCK and also the Diva on the Eagle Gaming side that really messed up things for any coordinated set plays. It was bizarre had. because it was Davin who brought it out first and then got in mm -hmm. by Nico. And then they thought, oh, cool, we can respond now. There's no, no way they're going to expect an immediate grab to follow. But RCK was on point. He was ready. Kings Row is the map we are going to. I feel this actually is pretty good for both teams because as we saw in the last series, there is a lot of tank play on this map. And what an eagle like? Tank play. Little, little secret here. Shouldn't really spill this, but I'm going to anyway. In this series, this was one of the only maps we were going to see guaranteed. One of. There could be more. We'll wait and find out there. That's a nice little teaser. Ooh. <laughs> Teasing-wise, though, curious to see what comps they bring out. We've seen some teams experiment, I suppose you could say, with Wrecking Ball and King's Row. Very, very good, thanks to all of the vertical movement, a lot of corners. I know that Windstrike are one of the big teams who were at least experimenting with it initially. Unfortunately for them, obviously, we saw them go home in that last series against Angry Titans. This semi-final is to determine, of course, who will be joining them in the grand final at Paris. The dream is there for Eagle as the French team to play in front of a home audience. Giganti, though, they know the British Hurricane are out of the way. They want to win this out and show that actually they can go on and do the double. They can win contenders multiple times. Only got that season one victory under their belts from previous year. Obviously, we're using a different iteration this year. Season one, obviously, of oh, 2018, lost out to British Hurricane. Season two might be their time this year. They obviously have to win this series and then go up against the newly anointed grand finalist, Angry Titans, if they can beat out Eagle Gaming. I like the Gigantia mixing things up a bit here as well, taking the tanks of the ground war, but making sure they can take to the sky with the Farah. They have to have Davin on the Widowmaker because if there's a Widow on the other side, well, he's going to permanently be able to contest the Farah and Hardest, he gets domed right out the gate. Still a sniper, I guess. It's pretty close to Widowmaker if you're playing Hanzo. He's going to immediately change things up as he has the benefit of spawn advantage to go onto that Roadhog. Just something we saw from Angry Titans on their offense earlier. It's really, really good at getting picks. So if someone is on the high ground and they're standing over you, just pinging arrows away or whatever it might be, or even afar in the sky, you can get that hook and pull them down from that high ground. They're no longer safe and they're in the middle of a team of six. They're going to die incredibly quickly. And we've already seen what guys like Hardest and Leaf can do on this pick. Very curious to see how the hardest chooses to use this and who he chooses to target. Leaf, that no one expected that change. He hung back in spawn. They thought he was with the main team. No one expects the hidden leaf as he takes out Davin from the side. Shadow will get a D mech, but it's inconsequential for Eagle Game, and they've got control of the point, and they're starting to get control of the kill feed. Team Giganti left in disarray from a relatively fast capture from Eagle Gaming. Gladiators Legion send their regards. Sending five men out. I genuinely think Giganti assumed that they would just come out as a six and try and roll them over with tanks and healers. But Leaf lurking back, didn't swap until the, ta the attack was already underway. Got up on the high ground immediately was the answer coming through to Davin. They both go, okay, fair play. We've already seen how the snipers work out. Let's change things up now. Leaf is going over to that Brigitte to give us that good old 3-3 comp with a bit of a mix in there. Nope, hardest onto the Zarya makes a lot more sense. On the other side, double projectile coming out for Giganti. Very, very good at breaking down these frontline shields and just getting that old charge online incredibly quickly. Conventional Goats against the Conventional Goats Buster. If Eagle Gaming can win out against this, what's considered a counter composition, they're really making their mark on their dominance when it comes to tank play. And that's what it's all about for those guys. Proving that they are the go to tank team. Out comes the ult from Shadow up in the air. It's going to get one though. Little by responds, and actually it's a Lucio bringing down the fire. It's a linchpin kill to take out Super Blue. Cloud is going to be brought back after he's down by Harness, but they can't resurrect more than they've been killed out. Transcendence comes in to breathe a second wind into Team Gigantes. They push back against Eagle Gaming, but Leaf's still alive, causing havoc for Davin. 
As you see Hardis moving closer to that door, trying to get involved in the fight. Hip gonna be the person to down and it's Cloudy. And Eagle Gaming, Hardest. they were coming back at them again, and they were decided to give a punch back of their own. Eagle Gaming gonna keep moving towards that point B. This guy is an absolute machine. We've been saying it all season long. The guy is just absolutely insane, especially on this Zarya. And this was back when Eagle weren't strictly the strongest team. They were still dropping series against teams like we have all, which you didn't expect them to lose. This guy is consistently been top tier, and it feels like the rest of the team have come up to match him. Shatter blocked out. Self destruction to go over the top. They take out Darwin, so no grenade damage. But where's the follow up from the Graviton Surge? It's a wasted opportunity for Team Giganti. As point B is going to be captured. Five minutes, ten seconds for the final push, Des. Eagle Gaming are truly running with momentum in this series now after that first map win. No doubt the wind is in their sails, and Giganti. Looking a little bit flat, getting caught out on that first point by that cheeky change from Eagle Gaming, showing they aren't just going to run at you with 3-3 every single time. They're happy to switch things up when it's absolutely required. And, well, 3-3's working in the streets. They're carrying on to the final point. There's no hands to combo with this Graviton Surge, but who cares? It's Eagle Gaming, Trid. Shadow's being very close to his own Dragon Strike, but because RCK threw out the Graviton Surge, they won't have it to begin this fight. We're going to rely on the Riptide instead. Nico steps right onto a trap for Shadow, but the shield's going to keep him alive. Hardest sprays down. Here's the Graviton Surge. Coalesce is going to cut through them all. Dragon Strike as the counter flow for Team Giganti. But Eagle Gaming don't give a crap about the Dragon. They're going to keep moving forward and pressing on against Team Giganti and get this spawn, get this payload right outside their spawn room. Hardest about to get Shadow, but I don't think it's time to drop in. No, he won't. He goes down. Eagle the ones in the driving seat. There are no members left alive. That nice shadow comes through to tie down RCK. Eagle Gaming pushed through. They have wiped the floor like a on their attack of King's Row. Four minutes, nine seconds remaining. That's one of the fastest King's Row offenses we have seen all trip, trip, trip. season. It's going to go up. Yes. Oh, how satisfying oh, by is nine that? nine seconds. One of the fastest we've seen. Not the fastest. We've had some five minutes remaining on some quick pushes, but Eagle Gaming showing up in the semi-finals, Des. Truly a mind blower. You just, pff, what do you even say to that? Giganti, I said on the first map, they've run 3 3 against them. Okay, we've lost. Let's show them what we're made of on these, on these following maps. They went towards things like the Farah, like the Widowmaker. They got kind of outgamed almost, out mind gained by Eagle Game with Lee switching over to that Widowmaker. And Shadow on the Farah. It's one of those ones that you ignore because Nico consistently had his number. We saw it in one of the first games the other day, actually, with Giganti playing against Young and Beautiful. Track going onto the Farah on Rialto. He was completely shut out by RCK. Now they've had the tables turned on them. Well, this is where they're really going to get their resolve tested here. They've got to show what they're made of, show why they've got that champion spirit inside them and prove they deserve that spot in the finals because as it stands, Eagle Gaming are looking like the stronger team and I never thought I'd be saying those words. Especially not in this season. We said them last season when Eagle Gaming came in with that record and that must have left a bitter taste in their mouth, but their palate has been refined. It's been changed. They're looking for the sweetness of Paris and the home crowd to play against. And Team Giganti, they're going to have that, some of that bitterness of their own, courtesy of Eagle Gaming. And I said for Eagle as well, yesterday we saw a good four of their members really stepping up to the table. Those names were like Hip, Super Plute. Hardest was one of them as well. Leaf, not really a name that I included in that list. Nico, no doubt in there too. But he has been stepping up on this Brigitte, doing work. We saw him on the Widowmaker. It was only one shot, but that one shot won them that push because Davin was no longer around to contest. Brilliant play out of them so far. And we said, they've got to go beyond. Show us that 120%. They're giving, to it, giving it to us so far. Eagle Gaming hiding off to the corner, don't want to reveal everything. And Team Giganti have a lot of options of where they can move. They just don't want to fall into the trap. And look, you see Lilbo checking out the window, just being the scout for and feeding them the information. They drop down to match them in the tank war. Dares to stay are going to have positional advantage and not concede it over to Giganti. But Giganti want to break through their defenses regardless as they push forward and take control of the point themselves. But Shadow getting the first kill onto Superpoint. The linchpin for Eagle Gaming has fallen. They need to crush the surrounding members and make sure that they hold on to this and take it in a dominant fashion. It's one, it's one big uh, compliment a lot of coaches and teams have pay, played to Giganti is that when it comes to 3-3, they are the number one team at having the Brigitte stun your main tank and that main tank dying in a split second. It's like the members just know the timing is perfect. All the projectiles are already on their way towards the Reinhardt as soon as that shield goes down. That's a prime example of it because even though Eagle Gaming on the first map showed a very, very good proficiency with 3-3 in keeping Super Pluk alive and being able to drop down Cloudy, in that instance, they had an instant answer. No shields came through. No amount of healing was keeping him alive. That's one of the curses of taking something like a Zen over a Moira. What the coaches won't tell you is the shield bash triggers the aim lock for all of Team Giganti onto the Reinhardt's head. So unfortunately, they have no choice in that matter. Hardest and the rest of Eagle Gaming and of course against Team Giganti. And 
try and negate the damage from that shield bash combination that Giganti are very efficient at pulling off. Davin already taking out Leafs, so they have no chance of doing it on their own. Eagle Gaming struggling to keep themselves on this corner. Cloudy has an Earth Shatter. Where is the defense from Eagle Gaming? It's non-existent. He doesn't have to use it. We thought Eagle Gaming were fast. Team Giganti are matching, matching them second for second. It's the King's Row curse. We have a lot of curses here in Europe, apparently, but on King's Row, we were very guilty last season of saying, wow, they have stormed through that in three minutes. There is no way they'll lose this map. And on the next push, the other team do exactly the same back onto them. And then we go into the overtime pushes. Giganti, though, they've got all the momentum in their favor. Every single ultimate online. Eagle Gaming aren't too far away themselves. And in fact, they've almost got six compared to Giganti's five. Davins was trying to go for a flank from behind, but they shot the right click in there, letting them know they know exactly where he is. Self-destruct goes up and over. Shadow and Leaf going to stun each other. Leaf coming out the victor in that engagement. Superplug shield very low. He's got an orb of harmony to keep him alive. He's being held together. Shatter to deny the combo. Doesn't come out in time, but Hardis will take out Cloudy instead. Eagle Gaming coming back with the defense as point B was on the line. Good hold as well. I managed to eat away the grab at least from Eagle Gaming initially. And despite Giganti being the ones with the play from Davin, still didn't manage to make it work. Hardis already 60% back towards his own. Make that 70%. The guys in the desk said it. This guy flies towards alts like no other. And they'll have that back online in no time. Biggest issue for Eagle Gaming is they used every single ultimate in that engage. They have literally nothing until Hardis gets that ultimate back up. Going through the time bank quite nicely. Three minutes 40 left for Team Giganti as they're moving back. Round to this first corner, still being kept far away from the payload by Eagle Gaming. Want to allow some time for that to preclude back to Team, uh, back to team Gianti's spawn. Sound barrier being used. Shatter negated by a sound barrier. And the Earth, the Earth Shatter Shatter's not working. Everywhere. As they're going to throw out another one. But the victor is, of course, going to be Super Quick with Eagle Gaming. They're going to push Giganti back yet again. Three minutes, 15 on the clock. And they're stalling out RCK as much as they can. They're escorting him back to the spawn room. They cut it short, though. Super Poop the Martyr in this situation. Stalling out RCK, as you say, is a big one. It does run down that clock a bit more. At this point, even if Giganti now have a flawless map performance, they cannot match the time bank that Eagle Gaming have got coming through. So they'll be the ones with the advantage if it does go into the next round, but Giganti has still got to manage to finish first. Three ultimates coming online for them, looking for another big push. Eagle Gaming got that defensive ultimate online. In fact, two of them, just to make sure they can answer to the aggression coming out of Giganti. And a self-destruct from Nico about to join them as well, just to the Graviton Surge that could come out from Davin. Stays alive, gets that charge, wrecks out that damage. self truck going onto the back line. They're trying to isolate the tanks. Will not work. The Super Poop is stunned up and killed. And Team Giganti are going to use this momentum, push forward and break through Eagle Gaming's defense. The Shadow follows up onto Leaf. Lilbo going to drop down to RCK and Cloudy moving forward with the protective barrier. There's not much Hardish can do as the hammer swing will send in straight to the hospital room, which happens to be their spawn room. Great catch out there. It did require quite a bit of resource from Giganti to push forward with that one. The transcendence being the big difference maker. Nico, a bit of an off self-destruct there as well, kind of landed into the wall and was nowhere near any member of Giganti. I think he just slightly got the angle wrong. So a small mistake coming out of Eagle will cost him that second point defense, but they've got four ultimates to play with here. Graviton on Surge pulling Giganti. They wanted to retreat, but they're not being allowed to as Eagle Gaming going to pull him forward. Super Poop getting a kill onto Cloudy. Davin taking out Leaf. Hardest follows up with a kill of his own onto Shatter. As Super Poop sitting on that Earth Shatter, but will not need to use it as Giganti have already entered into full retreat. Like we always say, whichever main tank goes down first tends to dictate how the rest of the fight goes. And you saw it there as a prime example. Super Poop with that shield up there had Hardest behind him just firing the laser through onto the key members. Davin was left trying to break open a shield. Damage that would have been much better served going down onto key members of Eagle Gaming. So always keep an eye out for seeing which of those main tanks go down first. It will always dictate how the fight goes. Despite questionable uses from Nico, their alt conservation has still been good for Eagle Gaming. They're sitting on four. They're going to pop the rally early. Graviton Surge Beautiful. coming out from Darwin. They're going to throw the charge. There's the Gagatti bolt for four kills. Make it a D-neck for Darwin to follow up with the fifth. Team Giganti pull out their finishing move. They're not ready to give up King's Row yet. They absolutely are not, but Eagle Gaming still coming back up and fighting this one in. Giganti with three ultimates online, including that sound barrier, which to be honest with you, has been a huge factor in these fights. And once again, the classical Giganti bomb. Cloudy goes through, charges the Rhine out of the way. There is no shield to save the rest, and they win that fight cleanly. They're trying their own. The grab self-destruct will still find Davin, but he's not got an ultimate to his name. Protective barrier is the only answer. Throws down a shadow of their own into the sound barrier of Eagle Gaming. 
Looks like they've got control of this one. They've burnt it down to the two-minute mark. Dev, even if Gigante finish at this point, they could be doing it with overtime, at which point Eagle Gaming have, will have four minutes to capture a percentile of point A. And we'd have to see an heroic performance coming out of Gigante in that situation, but we've still got a minute 45 to play with this time round. Hardest yet again got a Graviton Surge online. You may as well assume it's going to be online 24-7 because this guy has it up an absurd amount. And it's Cardi can't walk around the corner, and guess what? Eagle Gaming don't want to let them do that either. The rally is there to keep everyone's armor up. Huge shatter from Super Pluke Knox and Team Giganti for six as they follow up with nearly as many kills. If I'm angry times right now, I'm sitting there swelling because so many teams wrote Eagle Gaming off as a tank only team. If you find a counter to 3 3, then it's no problem at all. But there is a reason why they are consistently winning these tank fights and forcing Giganti to play their style. Not only is the case that when Giganti tried to run something else, they were immediately shut down by Eagle with the Roadhog. They just don't have an answer to it, it feels. They've literally got a minute to go through, maybe two pushes to try and end this out. And Eagle has sat on those double defensive ultimates once again. One minute remaining for Team Giganti as they're just about to touch the payload. And Old Advan is still in favor of Eagle Gaming. Davin's about to change that with Graviton Surge coming online for himself as RCK loading up the final cartridge for that Giganti bomb. And it's been a bit of a shame that Giganti are relying on that combination to make real territory. They're going to go for it anyway. They're sending it over. Oh, Hardy, he move back. He can't get the shatter. Denied. The Giganti bomb, but Kali will still get the kill onto Super Pluto. That gives him a man advantage. Graviton Surge from Eagle Gaming tries to buy them even more time as Leaf's going to move back towards his team with the rally. And there's a D mech onto RCK. He's behind enemy lines without his fighter jet. He's surely going to be picked off unless Giganti can push forward with this one. They're on the home stretch, Des. They're more than likely going to be doing this in overtime. It is not looking good for a completion or a win on this map. The completion can still happen. Hard is going to be bringing out out onto the Wrecking Ball once again, just with a stall time. Eagle are back here, of course, all the ults come out. Earth Shadow comes down, catches two. Self-Destruct still finding Shadow in the Chaos, and Ripper, Nico picking up a double, might deny the completion altogether from Team Giganti. Eagle Gaming just need to take care of Master and RCK in quick fashion to deny them any final pushes, but the spawn advantage is in favor of Eagle Gaming. The series lead is in favor of Eagle Gaming as they go into the half with a 2-0 scoreline. Oh boy. And we said on paper this is a Giganti series. Sadly, paper does not always equal reality. And in this case, it's an absolute nightmare for Team Giganti. Eagle Gaming running tanks, strolling the way through. Small adaptations where needed to deal with the comp being thrown at them. But they are showing that flexibility in the 3 3. The small changes they're making is giving them the advantage over Giganti. Giganti have got one hell of a half time talk to have between themselves now. They are one map away from being knocked out to Eagle Gaming. Just let those words set in. And one map away from Eagle Gaming completing the French Revenge, getting that final bit of satisfaction after they were left so disappointed in season one. We're going to take it over to our analysts. They're going to break down the shenanigans of the first two maps, and we'll bring you map three shortly after that.